Hello crafty friends. Welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me. My name is Melissa Miller. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Southern California and today I thought we would work with our tombstone treat boxes. They are on page 75 of our mini catalog and you know the kids are all going back to school and Halloween is going to be here really quickly. I just love to give out little boxes and bags and anything that I can that's decorated for the time of year that we're in and hand them out. I just love to see someone smile, get a little treat, and happy to get something nice. So we're going to be doing some scene building. I thought since they are tombstones, we would try to make it into a little cemetery scene. We're going to be doing some heat embossing, some masking some ink blending, and then our die cutting. But before we get started, I wanted to announce the winners of my Poinsettia Petals giveaway. Congratulations, Eloisa and Mena. I appreciate your support and watching. I will get your cards out first thing tomorrow. So um, the stamp set that we will be using is Frightfully Cute on page 52 of this catalog. And if you purchase the bundle, you get the stamp set, which is shown here, and the dies, and you get 10% off when you purchase as a bundle. But you don't have to purchase them as a bundle. You can purchase them separately. First, I wanted to show you the, uh, the stamp set, which we've got our witch, our cat, and our moon, and our bat, some little bottles of poison with the little bubbles coming out. We've got a spider on here and a whole bunch of really cute sentiments. We will also be using our die set, which is called Frightful Tags Dies. We will be using the tree, the fence, and our sentiment strip. Oh, and also the, um, the circle for the moon. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, when you purchase the tombstone boxes, you get eight per pack and you get two sizes. You get one that is just a little bit longer and a little bit narrower and that's going to be your bottom box and these are really nice because they already have the adhesive on them so you don't have to worry about that so let's put away our bottom box and we're going to get started with our heat embossing first we're going to bring in our stamparatus now when i decided where to place my witch and my cat i went ahead and i put this in here and uh let me find my other magnet. I put this in here and I knew I wanted to do the scene building. So I took my uh, little fences here, the little gates, and I kind of placed them. And then I placed my uh, cat in there because I wanted the main body of the cat to show. And then I decided where I wanted my witch and my bat. My bat is actually a little bit loose. So we're going to put him back on there and then pick him up. So he goes actually down here closer to the tree. So we're going to put him down there and we'll pick him up. And you just place your plate in there and then you can pick him up just like that. So what we're going to do is we need to bring in some of our, our embossing buddy just to wipe off all the, the static cling and the, uh, the oils off of your fingers. So we've got that wiped nice and clean. We will bring in our Versamark. You know what, and I am gonna move him just over a little bit. There we go. And we will ink up our images with the Versamark. Now this is just your clear sticky ink that you use when you are heat embossing. So we will be heat embossing with black. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my images and because we're doing more than one here I think I'm going to give it another a quick little second inking of our sticky ink go ahead and do that press it down again good now we're going to go ahead and take this out of here we're going to put our black embossing powder on there we're going to need that bad and when you put the embossing powder on, you're just going to sprinkle it on. Let me get my little coffee filter here. We're just going to sprinkle it on. And when you see it on there, it's matte. 
perfect. We've got our cat all covered. Let's do our witch up here. I just kind of tap off the excess. If you do get um, a little bit on there, you can always take a paintbrush and just wipe it off if it ends up where you don't want it. But that's why we use the embossing buddy so it doesn't stick where we don't want it. All right, there's our bat. And it looks like our bat got a little bit too much powder on there because I moved him and I shouldn't have. There we go. We're just gonna clean it up a little bit just with a paintbrush and that works perfect. All right. I removed him and I shouldn't have after I set him on there because he did have a little bit of ink on him. Good. Okay, let's get our powder out of the way and we will heat emboss. Now when we heat emboss, it's going to turn shiny. So as soon as you see it turn shiny, you know that it's heated and you're good to go. That didn't take too long. It only takes a second. And as soon as it turns shiny, you know that you're good to go. Okay, so let's move on. Now we will need to mask our moon before we do our ink blending. So what I did here was I took a little square of our masking paper, the Avery masking paper that I showed you in the last video, and I took the moon die and I just cut out the circle. We will be using both pieces. We're going to be using the negative and the positive piece here. So for our moon, we're just gonna peel off that and we can just see where we wanna place it here. We want it to be kind of by the witch there. And so for our ink blending, we're going to be using our sponge daubers instead of our blender brushes because we're gonna be doing a little tiny detail and we wanna be able to get in there. I'm just going to put a couple pieces of scrap paper under here just to protect the sides that I don't want the ink on. And we will be using our stencils that came in the March 2021 paper pumpkin kit. And we're just going to ink blend all over. We're gonna be using our memento for this. And I just wanna get some color on there. Just to kind of cover up the, uh, the tombstone instead of so it doesn't look so much like cement, I want it to look like a scary scene. So let's go ahead and just move this around. We're going to just add some black color on there. And this uh, paper is just a little bit waxy, so we're gonna be able to wipe off any excess. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We just want some cloud images in there just to give it a little more detail, just like it's a scary Halloween night. There we go, just add some scary clouds in there. With our full moon, put that aside. And what I'm gonna do here is I always have a, um, a microfiber towel, and because this ink does just kind of sit there, we're just gonna wipe off the excess, but we can still see our clouds. We're just gonna kind of fill that in a little bit. And then we're going to bring in our evening evergreen and just do a little bit more ink blending on the bottom, just so the cat doesn't look like he's sitting there in, in the clouds. We kind of want him to have a little bit of a ground cover here. So we're just gonna add a little bit of green and then again, just give it a quick little wipe because that does just sit on that paper. All right, close up our ink pad here. And now we are going to heat emboss our moon. So what I did here was I tried a couple different ones. I tried one with white embossing powder and it really, really stands out. And then I tried one with the clear embossing powder and I liked that better because you know the moon isn't just solid white. You can see all the craters and everything, so I really liked the clear better. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take that other piece of our masking 
and we're going to put that on first. We're just going to kind of lay that over. Hopefully I'm not in there. Lay that over the moon. And then we can peel up the center piece, the center of the moon. And like I said, we've got a lot of steps here, but they're all very simple. It's just a little bit of a more detailed project. So I took my Whisper White ink, uh, Stampin' Ink refill, and I took a sponge dauber. And I just put a little bit of ink on the end of the sponge dauber because I do want the moon white. I've been using it, can you tell? It doesn't want to come out, it's all at the bottom. I just took a little bit of ink on my sponge dauber, and this is gonna remain sticky, so we don't need to use our Versamark on this. And we're just going to pounce on here and kind of make that, cover that moon, and make it nice and white. But we don't want it too white. We still want a little bit of the background to show. So I just added the clear embossing powder instead of the white embossing powder. And we're gonna leave that there and then we are going to put our clear. So let's bring in our coffee filter. And this is our clear embossing powder. And leave that on there because I want to make sure that the embossing powder doesn't go anywhere else. We're just going to dump that on. Kind of shake that off. And you can see that it's nice and coated. So now we're going to move that. And then we will take this off. Perfect. So now we're going to heat emboss. And you can see that as soon as it turns shiny, you know that it's done. And also, it looks like I forgot to do the other bat. We need to do another bat on there, so we will put him on our block. We're going to ink that up with our Versamark. And we're gonna to need to bring in our black again. So let's put our bat right there. Don't rock, just uh, firm pressure. Don't rock the stamp. And then let's bring in our black. There is a lot of heat embossing, but you know what? The heat embossing kind of makes it. It just gives the project a little bit extra. There we go, he's perfect. Move that so we don't blow powder all over. And the hotter your heat gun, the quicker that your uh, embossing will go. So let's put that away. And now we can build our little cemetery. So I did use some of our adhesive sheets for my little fence and for my trees. And I just wanted to show you how easily that goes on there. So I have a piece of black here, like I used for my fence. And now I did my fence in some gold and black, and I really kind of liked the black better. It just gave it more of an eerie feeling. So in order to use our adhesive sheets, you just take a piece of your cardstock and cut it to whatever size you need. Also cut your adhesive uh, sheets to whatever size you need. They just go on the back really easily. Just firmly press that down. You can do a large piece, a small piece, whatever size you need. Now I didn't need a very big piece, so I just did a real narrow strip like that. And then make sure when you run it through your die cut machine that your cardstock is face up and the uh, adhesive sheet is down. Then you'll just run it through your mini cut and emboss machine and it'll pop right out just like that. So that's what I did there. And so now we're gonna build up our scene. So these all have the self adhesive sheets on the back. We're just gonna peel the back off. Comes off really, really simple, just like that. And then there's adhesive all over your die cut image. Now, I could have used the, um, the fine tip glue pen, but I just thought that the adhesive sheets would be so much easier because I was doing so many of these. So we're going to put our, oh, we need to do our tree first. 
put our fence down there. We're going to do our little tree, get the back off of that. And what I did here was I kind of wanted one edge to hang off of the side of the box. So I figured out where I wanted it. Just like that. And then I put my little tree down in there. Let's put it down a little bit more for the cat. Just like that. And then just stick it on. And I do have my um, fence hanging off just a little bit and also the tree. And I'll show you how to uh, fix that in just a minute because it does have adhesive on it. And we don't want the adhesive to stick to anything else. So there's our second tree. Our second little gate here. We're just going to place that right there. Try to get them even. And he flipped over. Let's see. There we go. We've got our little gate, our tree. There we go. And it looks like he's going to kind of cover that bat, but that's okay. The bat's in the background. Press that down. Just give it a little burnish. And then that adhesive will stick really, really well. Okay. And then all we need to do is add some sequins. I am using my Artistry Blooms adhesive backed sequins. They come in a pack like this. You get several colors in here. We are going to be using the orange ones. Let's put some of the smaller ones on there. We're just gonna add those randomly around our moon. Put one down here. Well, let's put one over here by the witch. And we can put one down here on this side. There we go. And then we need to add our sentiment. Now I did already pre-prep this. I just stamped the uh, sentiment and then cut it out with the, uh, with the sentiment die. We're going to add some dimensionals here. We just really need three. I've got the mini dimensionals that we're using here because it's a smaller sentiment strip. Get the backing off of there. And just add your sentiment. I think that's centered. Is that good? It needs to go over a little bit. There we go. Just put that on there. And then we can build our box. The box is so simple. Just fold your edges, fold your pieces. And then we've got our self-adhesive tape already on here. So we're just going to fold everything in. Just like that. Peel our tape off of there on both sides. Firmly press that tape in there so it stays on there. And our box is done. So what I was talking about earlier is we did have our little uh, fence here hang over in our tree. And what I like to do for that because it does have sticky on it still. I just take a little bit of baby powder and just put it on the part that is sticking out. Hopefully you can see that. I'm trying to get it in the camera. Just a little bit of baby powder and put it on those images that are sticking out and then they will no longer be sticky. Now it looks, I'll wipe my hand off here. And then you can just take your microfiber towel or whatever rag that you keep handy for working and nobody will ever know that there's even baby powder on there but it just keeps it takes the stick off so i hope you enjoyed this little project today let me get my area cleaned up real quick here and i'll show you some more here's another one that we did with the uh, foil paper for our gates and then here's the one that i did with the uh, purple clouds still not sure how i like that one i really think that i like the uh, the darker clouds better it makes it look a little spookier if you liked this video 
please give me a thumbs up. Please comment and please share. I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. Have a great day. Bye-bye.